What was that? Welcome to our ninth episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 EST for five minutes only from Massachusetts. My name is Hayden. Hi, Hayden, and I'm Anton. And uh, today's episode was, as I've indicated, a ton of work to put together, uh, much more than I typically uh, uh, end up doing. But uh, it's going to take us the full five minutes. I think, Hayden, you should introduce the topic, kick off the timer, and see if we can actually complete. Um, it's a win if we do it in five minutes. It's a loss if we don't. Yes. So um, it's a small bait and switch. Um, it, it was advertised as a Google authentication, but we're actually going to not spend our time walking through the how-to of how to do that. I will take a moment to highlight the work of my colleague, Adrian, uh, his blog. Um, he wrote an excellent blog that is still relevant today as it was back when 5.2 was released. Uh, it is how I accomplished um, creating my demo uh, application today. I don't think it's necessary for us to walk through that. What I want to talk about is how we can, uh, once we have that done, how we can extract user data from the social sign-on so we can then use that data programmatically. Oh, great. Yeah, Google, as well as Facebook, any of your social sign-in providers actually provide more than just authentication. You get other information about the user. So what do you want to get? So here I am. I'm logging in using uh, uh, the method, methodology that Adrian recommended. But I want, I want to do more than this. So here on my page one, I have um, a, I, I, I'm anticipating being able to reference something interesting about the user. So I, I have some application items for their picture and their first name, but I don't know how to get that. So Google has this information. Where can I get this? Okay, well, it's really easy, um, especially with, I see you're running 20.2. So if you go and edit your authentication scheme, 20.2 has made it very easy. Um, as long as you know what you're looking for and you know what Google is giving you, you can just, for example, here you go down to the additional user attributes and um, you put in given name because I know Google's giving you a, a, an element called given name and you just map it to your application item. It can be a page item, whatever it might be, but there you go. You've got given name and we're, we're only at three, three minutes, 20 seconds to go. I think we're done. Well, <laughs> good job, Anton. So uh, let's, let's test this, see if this works. And look at that, that is magical. Uh, I now have access to my first name. So I'm able to give that little personalized greeting, but how was I supposed to know that it was given name? That really, I think, is today's tip, right? Um, and you can do a lot of research. You can go figure it out from Google, trying to, and, but the problem is if you're using Azure or Okta or something else, you might be getting stuff back that, that the administrator has set up that's not even in the documentation anywhere. Um, so uh, in that case, the easiest way to do it is to actually ex examine the payload you get back. The way to do that is to trace the page. So let's go into your builder, go to monitor activity, um, and look at active sessions. It's at the top right. Um, the key here is to make sure we get truly get a brand new session. So if you go back to your application, sign out, and then up into your session ID, this is key. Put in some junk, one, two, three, four, and get a, that will ensure you truly got a new session. So we're going to grab that session ID. We're going to go in here. We're going to find that session ID, and we're going to turn tracing on. So click there and turn it at full trace level. Great. And you do need a public page to do this. So you'll need to be on a public page. All right. Um, so sense. we've got a new session. We've got a public page. Now let's go authenticate. We click login with Google. That's going to take a little while because it's actually doing the full trace. It's writing everything. But if we click go here, um, we're going to find eventually we're going to get authentication callback right there. That is the debug we want to look at. Um, and we're looking for the payload that we got back. So the easiest thing to do is just search for payload. That right there is everything we got back from Google. So if you want to take a look at that, that JSON payload, you can take a look and see, ah, pretty that up. And this is everything that we have available to us. So we have family name, given name, there's your picture. Uh, and that is very cool, Anton. So if, if I were to copy and paste uh, this, you're all into my browser. Look at that. Now I have my picture. So right. now, using the tip that you uh, introduced me to me at the beginning of this tip, uh, I can go to my authentication scheme. Right. And uh, I know now that I can come into here 
And just as I identified given name, I now know that the key term to look for uh, for my picture is picture. And I have um, an application item set up to accept this as well. I'm going to apply changes. Then log out, log back in again. Log out. Log back in. Look at that. Now I, I, I can not only greet my user by their first name, but also greet them with a picture of themselves. So, And who doesn't want that? And Hayden, I was afraid we wouldn't finish this in five minutes, but I'm going to tell you to turn off the timer. There's so much more we could talk about, but if we did, it would we wouldn't uh, finish within five minutes and we wouldn't be able to call it a win. So five minutes, we managed to get something I hope is valuable to folks. Um, whew. So uh, we uh, really pushed it on time there. Yeah. So if um, if you really signed in just for five minutes, uh, absolutely, you can check out now. Um, but if and so all the things like the subscribe, all that, get me a new paper plate in the background, uh, <laughs> something like that. Um, but I'm willing to stick around for a few minutes uh, and extend our cinematic in some cinematic universe for today. Um, sure. If you are as well. I look forward to it. Excellent. So um, what we'll do is a quick wisdom of the week. Um, a rate, we'll do a rating first of the tip, uh, a wisdom of the week, and then answer any questions that people might have. Uh, so today's rating, I think that this was rich, but it was a little bit too much. Uh, I'm going to rate it a, I mean, potentially could have been too much. I'm going to rate it a tomahawk steak uh, or a ribeye steak that you would get from the, I think it was called, um, not the Bull and Finch. There's another restaurant in Boston that uh, had this enormous steak. And while it was great, it was uh, very rich and a little bit, uh, a little too much. Um, so not a bad rating. And uh, when this pandemic is done, hopefully we can go there. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so now for the wisdom of the week. And please, uh, if you have questions, don't forget to uh, stick around and ask those questions. Uh, I think we have a couple of things worthwhile. Today's wisdom of the week. Um, you're not done developing an Apex page until you've run it in debug mode and review reviewed the output. This definitely speaks to me. Um, I feel like I have, um, I, when a page is slow, for example, I my first instinct as to what the problem is, is often wrong. And uh, I have uh, spent a lot of time solving things that aren't actually problems. Yeah, and I'll point out that even if the page doesn't appear to have a problem, I think it should always be run in debug mode at least once. Mm -hmm. You know, Take a look because you might not realize that there's a problem. There might be just scan through the debug mode output and see if some error showed up or, or take a look at that tall bar. That tall bar might be just fine, but it might not. It might be there might be some immediate advantage to taking a look at it. So I think you're not done developing until you've looked at debug mode. Um, uh, so this is a great question from uh, Plement. Have you tried others? Absolutely. We frequently, in fact, Okta we use a lot, and Okta is perhaps the one that inspired this tip in my mind. Um, with Okta almost always we're getting more information back than just first name and last name. We get group information. And recently I had a, um, a user that was, we were expecting to get institution, the, the value institution. And sure enough, we tried to map institution and we weren't getting any value back and we checked the payload and it was coming back as intuition. <laughs> and, it was a typo on the administrator setup side, but the, and in fact, we asked three or four times and every time the answer was intuition. But when we looked at the payload or institution, it, anyway, you get the idea. Um, but if you view the payload, you don't have to um, uh, know, you, you, you don't need to look at that documentation and, and risk a typo. Right, exactly. You know exactly what's coming back. So I think, um, and Azure is another one that we use frequently. And I honestly, I think, I think these providers, Okta, Azure, Oracle Identity Manager, any the, these folks are the ones that are more likely to come in play with an Apex application because you're probably building this for your company and your company probably uses you know, the Office 365 or something like that. Um, 
Uh, <laughs> we'll have to come up with uh, ratings that, that don't requ require just Boston-based restaurants, Hayden. Um, you and I are based here, so it's, uh, it's convenient for us. Well, hopefully we can get those uh, uh, restaurant sponsorships to buy us. Those. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I like that idea. Um, what if you're not on 20.2? Sure, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, so uh, while we showed off how easy it is to do it in 20.2, uh, there's nothing, no, none of this functionality is not available to people who are not on 20.2. So uh, you have your application item, you can set up a computation against that application item that runs after authentication, and you can just use the uh, uh, PLSQL API, apex underscore JSON get varchar2, and then the name of the parameter that you're looking for. So we looked at the examples of given name and picture. So it'd be apex underscore JSON get a varchar2 picture or get varchar2 given name as examples. Yeah, and you know, I have a blog post specifically on this. Um, and the one thing that I'll point out is if you don't put anything in the additional user attributes in certain versions of apex, you'll get stuff in that apex JSON array. But in other versions, you won't get anything in that Apex JSON array. So what I have found is if you just put foo or something else in that JSON array, you'll get in that additional attributes, you'll get all of them into that array. So if you want to take a look, I have a, a blog post. We'll put, we'll put a link into it about how to get additional information from your um, into that array. And just remember, you might, you might have to put in you know, some junk in the additional attributes. Um, but that bl blog post will we'll get into the comments for sure. Um, Excellent. Uh, 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 so, <laughs> looks like uh, we've got somebody that's about to drop off. Uh, that's all right. I'm glad you, you made it. Um, Hayden, I don't think we need to, oh, we don't need to uh, belabor this or, or take any more time. Uh, I want to thank um, everybody that helps put this, this project together um, here in the InSum Cinematic Universe. Uh, Ethereal Algorithm is our producer. And thank you very much, Ethereal. And uh, um, I would say, don't forget to subscribe and like and all those things. Anything from you, Hayden? Uh, see everyone next Friday. All right. Bye-bye then.